Hey tubers, this is Pat Jordan coming to you from the Grain Ghetto in Illinois, very close to India. Nah. No. People say that I don't get to the point. So, here it is. One heaping tablespoon of black stone flour before cleaning. After it's cleaned, Heat your iron skillet to medium warm and dump in a big old clot of coconut oil. Hey, you wanted my recipe. This is the way I cook. A clot is defined as take a tablespoon, grab out a big old chunk of solid coconut oil, and toss it in the pan. My house is always cold until summer, so I have no idea how much liquid oil that might be. Put your cleaned blackstone flour into oil to burn off the cleaning water and then stir in up to about two teaspoons of the already ground and mixed spices composed of one heaping tablespoon of thyme, one heaping tablespoon of cardamom seeds out of the husks, the hulls, a teaspoon of sage, a teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of coriander seed, a tablespoon of fenugreek seed, three heaping tablespoons of turmeric powder. Notice I said turmeric because Rick does not have a tumor. Uh, five heaping tablespoons of dried oregano, since it's kind of fluffy until you grind it up. You toss all that into the oil long enough to smell the humusy odor of the lichen and get it crispy, and then pour it over what you're going to eat. Sometimes I throw in a chunk of cayenne pepper so that I know where it is, so that's there's no surprise when you eat it or no, oh my God, I just ruined the entire mess for putting hot pepper in powder form into this mix. I think it's awesome. If there is anything that you hate, then don't use them. I put all the spice ingredients into a coffee grinder and pulse it to keep the heat low and powderize the hard seeds and then store it in a baggie for further use. And now for the explanation part of our show. Degradation of the disease-associated prion protein by a serine protease from lichens. May 11th, 2011. Johnson, Bennett, Biro, Camillo, Duke, Velaquez, Rodriguez, and Besson, and Rock. Interesting that their affiliations are the Prion Research Laboratory, the United States Geological Survey National Wildlife Health Center, huh? And the Department of Veterinary Molecular Biology. Hmm. The article abstract says the disease associated prion protein, the transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, the probable etiological agent of the transmissible spongiform encephalopathies, is resistant to degradation and can persist in the environment. Lichens, mutualistic symbioses containing fungi, algae, bacteria, and occasional cyanobacteria, are ubiquitous in the environment and have evolved unique biological activities following their survival in challenging ecological niches. We investigated the prion transmissible spongiform encephalopathy inactivation by lichens and found acetone extracts of three lichen species. Parmelia sulcata, Cladonia rangiferina, and Loberia pulmonaria have the ability to degrade prion protein from the TSE-infected hamsters, 
mice and deer because we all know that uh, hamsters are free ranging and the geological survey has to track them. Immunoblots measuring prion protein levels and protein misfolding cyclic amplification indicated at least two logs of reduction in transmissible spongiform encephalopathy prion proteins. Degradative activity was not found in closely related lichen species or in algae or a cyanobacterium that inhabits lichens. Degradation was blocked by pephoblock SC, a serine protease inhibitor, but not inhibitors of other proteases or enzymes. Additionally, we found that uh, prion protein levels in the prion protein transmissible spongy form encephalopathy enriched preps or infected brain homogenates are also reduced following exposure to freshly collected, oops, P. sulcata, or an aqueous extract of lichen. Hmm. Our findings indicate that these lichen extracts efficiently degrade prion protein transmissible spongiform encephalopathy and suggest that some lichens could have potential to inactivate transmissible spongiform encephalopathy infectivities on the landscape. Ooh or be a source for agents to degrade prions. Further work to clone and characterize the protease, assess its effects on TSE infectivity, and determine which organism or organisms present in the lichens produce or influence the protease activity is warranted. I'll bet it is. Dagod fool is Parmotrema perlatum from the family Parmelacea, also known as black-edged leaf lichen, Pre previously known as P. chinensis. Of course they have to do a Babylonian name change. It's the same lichen, different black lipstick. The problem has always been that since we found that lichens can deliver the enzyme that can combat prions, the need for friendly lichens that wouldn't kill you are very limited. Couple that with the Brahmin contempt for non-Brahmins and the closely held secrets of cooking and medicine, and it was a perfect storm for me getting started so late to experiment on myself as a lab pat, as I always do that it took four years to get to where we're at right now. It's February of 2018, and I started this odyssey in April of 2014. I never suggest someone try something that I haven't tried myself. So after I determined that the black stone flower, a.k.a. Dagod Fool, a.k.a calpasi was a particular genus and species that did not require elaborate soaking to get the toxins out so it could be tossed directly into cooking i tested it on myself so i'm comfortable with passing that on to you if you watch my video vegan traps food prep you will understand the concept of raw agricultural products so you should take precautions to clean the lichen before you ever cook it I got my Dagod Fool directly from India. Not necessarily a good idea. It came with instructions. <laughs> it came with instructions that you need to sort the lichen from the barks. I love that one. And other debris. When I pulled out all the tree barks and dirts and moss and mushrooms and other lichens, I was left with half the volume that was sold to me. Not really a good return on investment of money and labor. Because they probably hire some Indian kids at minimum wage to use hose to scrape trees with, and probably no porta potties to keep their hands clean. I always assume that raw agricultural products can have everything in and on them. 
Lichens like to harbor microscopic mites and other insects. I've always found it fascinating that one of the favorite foods of mites is a nice juicy tapeworm egg found on moss. You can't exist in nature without complete coverage of mold spores and dirts and poopy kids' hands. So I triple wash the small amount of lichen I will use for that meal in a strainer to get the rough dirt out. Then I put it in a bowl with enough water to cover it and two drops of food grade 35% hydrogen peroxide. I let that sit for about two minutes and dunk and agitate it to make sure the extra dirt comes out as the lichen clumps rehydrate and get out any cryptic critters that uh, are released into the oxygen radicals. Oh my god, antioxidate, antioxidate! Uh, then I rinse them again. The traditional preparation of kalpasi is to toss the lichen in a dry skillet and dry it so that you can then put it into a grinder and use it as a ground spice. I find this labor-intensive, ridiculous, and annoying. I hate extra work. All spices that are pre-ground lose quite a bit of the essence of what makes them a spice. There's no need to do this to the lichen since you're going to cook what you need when you need it, and it's damned expensive. When 100 grams at best can cost $7 without shipping, we're hovering around $35 per pound, but when you see the sort on this raw material, you get about half of what you paid for. Doing it my way, the lichen is wet from the cleaning and ozonating, so I simply dump it into the hot clot of coconut oil and let that burn off the water. Then I dump in the dry spice and swirl it all around and let it cook and then toss in about a half inch of cayenne pepper. The mixture will be black because Dagod Fool is black stoneflower. It is a black lichen, so the color will come out. Don't burn your spices. Heat is what liberates the active ingredients in spices. Since I'm a dumb farm boy, I have no clinical knowledge as to whether the enzymes will be intact after cooking lichen. Therefore, the purpose of eating lichens to combat prions is theoretical at this point. I have no laboratory to test these theories. However, I have one last method to experiment on to attempt to preserve the living enzymes for the benefit for which this was designed. But since I'm only just one dumb farm boy and my body and kitchen are the lab, then you will have to wait until I've done the tests. What I can say is that Jordan Masala tastes damn good. Yes, I pour up to three tablespoons of spiced coconut oil over a single meal and eat it. See my video, Vegan Traps, Getting Greased, where I berate idiots who say that oil is bad for you. I've been doing liver cleanses every two weeks for three years, but that's a video of its own. Deer graze on lichens, so they will be getting the entire range of what the lichen has, including dirt, gravel, mites, and tapeworm eggs. Uh, since this is my masala, I will not hold to any traditional Indian formulas that include dogod fool, or as I like to say, doggone fool, such as goda masala. What I do is adapt and synthesize things that are a vast part of my overall experience. Holda Clark in her later years issued a list of spices that she used as essential oils to try to chase tapeworms out of the body. You think I might have a thing about tapeworms? Well, I've done all of Holda's stuff, but I've never seen a large animal parasite exit stage left. I really wanted to just to be able to say, See, there's the bastard, I gotcha. But if the spices are healthful and tasty, why not make them into a part of daily life instead of just therapies? What took so long to get to this point was the wall of silence from the Indians from India due to possible secrets of this healing food, plus there's also the stigma that it is listed as an aphrodisiac. 
I can attest that after eating large quantities of this spice that I neither have a big fluffy head of hair and I can still remember who I am. But um bum Bon Appetit from the Sioux Chef of the Grain Ghetto of Illinois, which is close to Indiana but not related to the India from which the lichens come.